Bonjour mon geek, salut mon heure des mots otaku, coucou, bienvenue sur Kamen Geeker, la chaîne des No Life. Alors je vous invite à vous abonner à ma chaîne et activer les notifications pour ne rien louper. Vous pouvez me suivre sur ma page Facebook, Kamen Geeker, sur Instagram et TikTok. Vous pouvez aussi rejoindre mon groupe Facebook, Kamen Geeker, le jeu vidéo en partage, un groupe dans lequel vous pouvez partager vos anecdotes de joueurs, vos coups de cœur et vos coups de gueule. Tous les jours de 22h à 23h, je stream sur Twitch et en ce moment c'est Tekken 8 mais ça va certainement changer. Et c'est maintenant l'heure de la première heure. Et oui, on va découvrir ensemble la première heure d'un jeu. Et aujourd'hui, il s'agit d'une sorte de reboot, d'un jeu sorti en 1992 et qui avait marqué les esprits. Il s'agit d'un jeu d'horreur, d'un jeu de survie. Il s'agit de Alone in the Dark. Allez, on se fait une petite partie So, your uncle, what's wrong with him? He's possessed. As in the devil? Something like that. He says a dark man is following him, watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? No, Detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. But Jeremy, but Jeremy didn't kill himself. Kill. Is that why? Is that your setup? Despite being convinced that he is truly possessed, he decided to put his last chips on Dr. Gray and his psychoanalysis. Figuring you might stumble upon some cure. You mentioned a letter. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to kill him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hardwood because he isn't worth getting. Here we are. My uncle's not well, Mr. Crumby. I want to make sure he's all right. Then what's my part of this? You couldn't get a cab? I just wouldn't feel safe going alone. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? No. But you might need to wave it around depending on how agreeable the staff will be. What exactly are we going to do when we find Jeremy? I don't know. Let's just find him first. Abandoned. It can't be. There has to be someone around. Wait here. I'll go around back.
Now what do we got here? Nah, I'm not getting in there. It's not a big tree to find inside a conservatory. Huh? What?
Don't mind if I do. Every day your silence weighs a little heavier. It's been a difficult year for everyone, and many have lost all hope. I read in the papers about people suffering. Pictures of dust-covered landscapes without a drop of water. I wish I knew if you were still tending the earth, or if you had turned your back against us. I have started to look for help elsewhere. I pray you will tell me if I'm going down a path that you find disagreeable. With help from Batiste and Charlotte, I found comfort in the practice of the voodoo. I have long been skeptical of that Caribbean cult, but it's been of good use to me. It seems all harmless in my book. I see some words dreamt up by the Creoles, and I carry around a small pocket of Grigri. Nothing of this is mentioned in the Bible, of course, but the French court of priestess tells me it's all connected. She says the Christian God is just one more perspective on the creator of things. That's what I like to think, but the other way around, that the spirits of her faith are just aspects of you, our Heavenly Father. I am so grateful for the words you gave Mr. Hartwood. We will, we will sing, sing your praises, your praises at St. John's, John's Eve. Eve. The world will be blessed soon again. Only the sacrifices of the Old Testament compare to your demands. Let it be the truth. A mother of earth, wood, and dirt. A mother of a thousand young. Sacred sun, one dollar. Black cat oil, dollar fifty. Devil shoe strings a quarter. That makes two dollars and seventy-five cents, madame. What was that you were telling the doctor? A goat without horns. What does that mean? Ah, you must have misheard me, madame. I said no such thing. Please. I know I don't look like any of you, but I'm devout. I'm ready to do what it takes. Mm. Do not be so eager to sacrifice the few things you have left, madam. Now please, leave my store. A goat without horns. What was that?
Please do Please not do touch, touch the boiler. The it is it working, is after all. While the While sabotage, sabotage has caused a leak, leak only the only decorative plate, plate has been completely ruined. ruined. Let's wait for Mr. Chance, Chance to turn up and he can take a look at the leak. Mr. Waits. Huh. That doesn't look the same. I need the key. Thank you. Sunday, June 22nd. I spent all day looking for Jeremy. I should have cared for the others, but I'm scared that he will do something irreversible. Cassandra is upset that I didn't give her the latest shipment of pain medication that Waits brought from the post office yesterday. I would have given it to her, but the company didn't send a new key this time around, so the box is just sitting there on my desk. They must have figured we had plenty of their gimmicky keys by now. I only remember seeing one lately. Grace was playing with it inside the grand parlor. Unless it turns up by itself, it will have to wait. I have to figure out where Jeremy is. I think Jack knew something. 
that dog of his found a strange rock permeating the house. She's showing us, he said, like those blots and streaks of fetid rot was talking to him. Thanks. What are you doing? Who are you? Whoa, pardon me, excuse me. My name is Edward Carnby, private investigator. I hope you don't mind we let ourselves inside. I do mind. This is private property. You can't just barge in here. I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. It's urgent, and no one was answering the door. We can't hear you knocking anymore. None of us can. Who is your uncle, darling? Jeremy. Am I right? She has that hot look glue, doesn't she? That's right. I'm Emily Hartwood. I just came to make sure my uncle is all right. Well, he is unavailable right now. He will have to come back another day. Unavailable? How? Is he sleeping? We can wait. He's lost. Don't I know you from somewhere? Who's your man again, Miss Hartwood? My name's Edward Carnby. Private investigator. Splendid. Enough! All of you, get back to your rooms. McCarthy, keep your eyes on the child. And you two, please leave immediately. Look, we're not here to cause any trouble. Just let us see the old man, satisfy the curiosity of my client here, and we'll be off. Jeremy has gone missing. There's no need to worry, but it might be some time before he turns up. The whole staff is looking for him. What? He ran off? I don't have time for any of this. Please, come back tomorrow. All right, in that case, we'll just wait in his room. You don't mind, do you? It's upstairs, right? Wait, you can't. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. In the corridor. It's the first door on your left. I'll tell Dr. Gray you're here. Excellent. Thank you, madam. Let's look around, see if we can pick up any clues. Every night the dog man stands opaque at the threshold of my room, counting the days until my spirit spills out of my tired shaping. 
Only his pallid mask shelters my remaining sanity. Staring directly into the face of that demonic sultan would surely sunder time itself. Would he have looked the same to my father as he struggled for his life? Does his veiled face haunt my niece quite the same way? I wish so that I could rest my soul in that sunburnt convent of Tarawaya. Would I find you there, Juan? Or Senora Perosi? Back from the beyond? Every night I hide from him, moving from one misshapen memory to another. Seems conjured out of fantasy and delirium. Places I struggle to even paint. I wish I understood your death, senor. Is there anything I could do for you but bury you in that bleak necropolis? That triumphant chapel rising above the ledges and the oven vaults shall be your sepulchre. How did you first come to understand such things, senor? How did you know that the battered boil in the basement would lead me to Lafayette Cemetery? Or how the old upstairs clock? with its astronomical motifs, would take me to that hateful mound outside of Claremont Harbor. Those are my memories, my past. Is there perhaps a chance, if ever so small, for me to see Tarawaya? Oh, I want that more than anything. Please, let my talisman take me there. Let me sit with one under his Bodhi tree. Despite having told me that talisman, Miss Jackson, the voodoo priestess, revealed none of her secrets to me. That's why I had to travel to Tonka. Instead, she cruelly told Baptiste, my caretaker, that he would be betrayed and killed in the most awful way, that the one he loved would pierce his thigh with a sharp spear, and that he would be devoured by his own mother. What a terrible thing to say. The people of DeSeto are becoming dangerous. They do not understand what they are doing. I must do something to stop them. I tried talking to Dr. Gray, but he confuses my worries. He's caught up in treating me. How can he expect evil to be cured with medicine and conversation? The orderlies, the housekeeper, and the patients are all deranged. They will call upon evil to enter this world. Oh, we'd be lost. Everything. Unless I can find the clerk, Mr. Waite. He seems to be a clear-thinking man. Maybe Beauregard. The dark man offered me a prison, and I accepted it. I signed that miscarried contract and entered the dark pack. Everyone is safe, except for me. I found a book full of peculiar notes. Have you heard of something called Tarawaya? No. What's that? I might be reading too much into this, but I think it's the place he wants to go to. Oh, okay. Sounds like a clue.
Hey, you know anything about this? Looks like some sort of talisman. No, I don't. Oh, help me out here, will you? I would kill the guy and throw some of this stuff out. I'd be crazy too if I had this much junk lying around. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I'm coming. Miss Hartwood. Emily. can't go that way. What the hell is 
is going on? Can't go that way. I need the key. so cool.
Get us our compare. They're not the good kind. Are you? Is this your store? There are no owners here. We both strangers in Jeremy's store. Jeremy did this. How? The pack with the dog man. Jeremy warned us, but we didn't think much of it. I'm Detective Edward Carnby. I was hired by Jeremy's niece to find him. Oh, yeah? How much you paying? $150. <laughs> She's sure getting her money's worth to die. Are you a thinking man, Compare? No, uh, not if I can help it. You know, I think Jeremy's hiding in a way we can't find him. He has this juju necklace with the guys on The talisman? That's right. It's some magic charm he got for Miss Jackson down the street. The voodoo priestess. You know surprising things, compare. Yeah, the mama Loa. Here, take the key. I locked the gate to save her place from all the ghouls and goblins getting inside. Maybe if you go there, you can find some clues to show you the way. Thanks. I'll have a look. You want to come along? Nah, I'm going to stay here for a while. Yes, sir.
Recognize this place. It's Miss Jackson's seance parlor. Let's see if she's got any information on Jeremy's talisman. It's the talisman, like the one in the painting. I think it's meant for the talisman. I think it needs numbers, like coordinates. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. He rigged it.
Subsequently, it's showing something. A place? Where is that? Huh. Alors, que dire Qu'en avez-vous pensé euh, Je ne sais pas si vous savez, mais il y a eu une démo euh, qui était disponible il y a quelques mois pour euh, nous familiariser avec euh, l'environnement euh, visuel et euh, un tout petit peu, mais non, un tout petit peu de gameplay de Alone in the Dark, hein, où on jouait euh, le rôle de la, de la jeune fille, et dont j'ai oublié le nom pour l'instant. Alors, euh, eh ben, franchement, je suis bluffé. Euh, le jeu, visuellement, le jeu est plutôt sympa, assez agréable à regarder, même si on est très loin des standards photoréalistes et ça, on s'en fout un petit peu. L'univers visuel est très cohérent. Euh, C'est très sympa de se retrouver en plein bayou euh, en Louisiane, voilà, avec une, oui, une ambiance film noir assez, euh, assez présente. La, la bande-son bande jazz est très très sympa et, et bien, bien utilisée, je trouve. Ça fait quand même un peu, un peu flipper, ben voilà, parce qu'on en fait, on, on avance, mais on ne sait pas où on va, on ne sait pas ce qui se passe. Euh, il se passe des choses d'ailleurs complètement dingues qui vont à, à l'encontre de la logique. On se demande si on n'est pas en train de devenir complètement fou, comme euh, les habitants du manoir d'Erceto que l'on visite. En tout cas, euh, très positif, euh, j'ai envie de continuer ce jeu, il donne vraiment envie. Euh, les, les, les mécaniques de jeu sont très sympas. Euh, J'aime beaucoup le, le côté survie en fait, qu'on retrouvait dans le premier Resident Evil et qu'on avait un petit peu perdu euh, au fil du temps. Ça donne vraiment envie. Euh, voilà. Les énigmes m'ont l'air assez sympas, assez nombreuses aussi d'ailleurs. Ce, ce qui est bien, c'est une, une bonne chose, hein, je trouve. Euh, vraiment, c'est une proposition fort intéressante. Et moi, je vous invite à y jouer euh, si vous aimez euh, ce style de jeu, hein, aventure enquête. Parce qu'il s'agit surtout d'enquêter. De, voilà. Et euh, mais que dire de plus, voilà, franchement, euh, jouez-y à ce jeu, il est super, il est super, n'hésitez pas. Voilà ce que je pouvais dire après cette heure de jeu. Euh, vous pouvez, je, tous mes commentaires, enfin tous mes liens sont en commentaire, hein, notamment pour les, les vidéos et puis le, la page Facebook. Après ça, bah, écoutez, je vous souhaite un excellent jeu, une excellente journée, et d'ici là, prenez soin de vous.